Why hello beautiful fish lovers and welcome to another episode of Puff Daddy Reef. Today I've got a lot of exciting stuff going on. I'm going to give you the final verdict on this recurve light on my Red Sea Reefer Peninsula. Also, I will be giving the instructions on how you can win the next prize giveaway. We've hit 2,000 subscribers, almost 2,100, so it's time to give you guys some stuff. What I'll be giving away is this Auto Top Off Deluxe. This is kind of a near the level of DIY sort of system that I had for my old quarantine tank. Don't worry, I did wash the float switch. It basically has a float switch that you clip on the back of your tank and then this little thing that when it's, you know, applies power to a pump that you plug into it when the water's low. You will have to supply your own pump. Um, basically an aqua lifter or something like that will work great, but if you want an opportunity to get this, stay tuned to the end of the video where I give out the instructions on that. The main topic of today though is a trust and automation. And this is very important in our hobby because a lot of the major oops and uh-ohs and catastrophes now, often they're caused by problems with our automation systems. We will clean the tank and leave something on or we'll change a setting and forget about it. I just saw Aaron's aquarium. He left his lights on 24 seven and lost a lot of corals. If you're interested in that, the link will be down in the section below. But a lot of bad things can happen when we either get too complacent with our tanks or trust our automation too much. Well, I've been kind of hiding a story that happened in my tank. I really didn't know how to address it, but I lost a significant amount of coral. Now, I say significant because at the time of this loss, I only had uh, two colonies in the tank, but I did lose a large and very valuable colony to me. And the main reason that I lost it was due to automation and a new system that I installed in my tank. So let me explain. Remember a few episodes back where I gave away my bulk reef supply dosing pumps? Well, I gave those away because I got a new pump, the Neptune Systems dose. Now this pump works with my Apex controller and it's great because it's very simple to set not only um, when it doses but how it doses. You can also remove fluids and add fluids. There's a lot of potential in there and I was excited to have it. Also I'm excited to have everything in one unique um, kind of clean unit. It's a great device. When I first got it I had the original Apex, the Apex Classic and I had plugged it into the Neptune System Apex Classic port. I'd set it up, it was working fine, it was dosing perfectly. Then I got the new Apex, plugged it into my new Apex system, and thought everything was just going fine as normal. But there's something that I didn't notice that happened when I plugged it from one brick to the new power brick. So here is my dashboard for my Apex Fusion. And you can see here, there is the dose uh, screen that shows me how much I'm dosing. Also, you can see here is the on and off switch for the doses. Now, these are where you can add the tables to actually program how much is dosed and when it's dosed, what sort of profile it is. So when I swapped it from one energy brick to the other, I thought everything was fine. This was still programmed. But what happened is when I plugged in the dose from the old block to the new um, energy bar, it created a new dose module in the system. And so I programmed the old one that it thought wasn't connected. Meanwhile, the new one, um, which is actually for this dose, was just kind of sitting here uh, hidden and unprogrammed. So for a number of like three months, I went from my standard dosing schedule, which I was very happy with had down really well and it wasn't actually dosing into the tank. Meanwhile, I had this new block um, that wasn't programmed. So if you look at my system, I really just need to get rid of this old one that is not relevant anymore for my tank. So that was the problem. Basically, I went from dosing 60 milliliters of calcium alkalinity um, per day, most of it over the night for a long period of time to nearly three months, uh, maybe not three months, but a couple months um, without dosing it. Well, the results on my tank were catastrophic. They might not have been so bad had I actually taken the time 
uh, to test my aquarium, but I suffer from a syndrome called lazy reefer syndrome or LRS, and I wasn't nearly testing my calcium and alkalinity as normal. The result is, is those values plummeted and it caused extra stress on my coral, leading to their eventual demise. So I did save the coral skeleton in my sump so I could actually show you um, what I lost. And I'll pull it out, but it's really sad when you have all these coral skeletons to kind of remind you of your failures. But I do also like to think of it as it reminds me of my success as well, uh, because this is a coral that I grew from a very small frag. So here it is, and this was kind of a Acropora locani type colony. Um, and it was lost. The whole thing just couldn't take the imbalance of the parameters. And so now it's just kind of an ornament um, down in my sump. So let this be a lesson to always, always double check everything when you install something. Also, if you're plugging in your Neptune system dose from one energy block to another, double check to make sure that um, it's not creating a second set of displays and a second set of outlets to program or everything. You want to make sure you're programming the, the right one. Uh, flip the switches and turn it on and see that it's actually pumping when you expect it is. So thanks for watching this part. Let's talk a little bit about my light. So have you seen from my last couple videos, I've done quite a few reviews of this light. This is the Max Spec Recurve. I think it is by far one of the most uh, beautiful lights that I've seen in the reef keeping hobby. And I really like the concept and the idea of it. Some of the things that I haven't liked though are the side wings just are way too dim and the color spectrum is nearly two of the channels are dedicated to a green or greenish color and one's red and there's only one channel on the sides that's actually blue. So the overall amount of blue light that can get from the sides is not nearly what I'm looking for. Now this light is great for LPS, uh, mixed tanks, and it's also great for tanks probably that are exactly the size of the light. If this was a four foot tank, it would be pretty good. But what I'm looking for is maximum coverage, maximum even spread because I'm an SPS junkie. I really want to get as much SPS in this tank as possible. So as much as I like some parts of the light, other parts of the light, mainly the fit of the tank and the, um, the side lights not quite living up to the expectation, I will be returning this light. I'm probably gonna get a uh, LED T5 combo light. I've seen the ones from Aquatic Life and I do like that because it gives me the opportunity to experiment with different center LED modules. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this, but that's my final verdict. And now it's time to talk about this prize drawing. So one thing I really like about YouTube is the ability to communicate with each other through the comments section. And I'm gonna go through a couple of your comments really quick, and the next prize entry will also involve leaving a comment on this video. So a couple of comments. I did get a lot of comments on my last video kind of about my cable management organization system. Most people in general really liked it. Um, they thought it was really tidy, according to Reefroid. Um, Daniel Chan kind of liked the setup and also um, he has his own journey on YouTube so check out his channel. Um, UE Boy kind of corrected me, AB Plus uses 4% red and green on those lights so okay. USMC Reefer thinks the mounting boards look awesome, thank you. Alex Juarez um, commented that maybe we should put a Tunzi wave box in this tank. That would be definitely interesting. Uh, Dakota James asked if I still have the uh, 80 gallon rimless aquarium. No, I don't. I traded it for coral. All my money goes to a coral and all my spare equipment that's not given to you is traded to coral as well. But if you're interested in that deep blue professional aquarium, 80 gallon rimless frag tank, it's actually a very good tank for the value. Um, check out my channel. I'll put a link below, but I've done a couple reviews on that. Zen Reefer asked me about the Frag Farmers Market. Uh, this is the East Coast kind of big coral trading market. I'm definitely going to do everything I can to try to make it there, so I hope I'll see you guys there too. Ryan's Reef suggests me removing my quarantine tank from the area where my cable management is. I have put some thought to that. For now, I'm not going to remove it because that tank has a glass cover. It has very little evaporation and it's right by the area 
um, where I kind of have a gap, but I do see your point. And so I've been thinking about maybe adding a computer fan to kind of uh, blow the air out of that area to keep it a little drier. If you have any ideas of how, me to, how I can keep it dry in there, please leave a comment below. But I'm just so tight on space in this place and have a couple agreements with the, the honey that I can't have too many tanks laying around the house. So I kind of do have to hide my quarantine tank in my stand. Ken Roskans uh, suggested if I'm going to put on a blue or black background. And I think I'm going to keep it at is, is because this is a peninsula tank. Reef Pro Shop, still wondering why my water looks cloudy and I'm still wondering as well. I'm 100% certain that it is bacteria uh, feeding off of nutrients from these Pucani rocks and hopefully it will go away soon. It is definitely getting a lot better and I have noted it looks worse on camera, but my corals have loved it. My LPS corals are so fat, they've grown so much, they're just eating this bacteria like crazy. So what's good for the eye isn't necessarily always good for the coral, but I'm hoping it clears up soon. I'm trying to different things and keep keep watching this channel. And you'll see if we can get it clear. And it's not a video without a quick update on the innovative Marine Nouveau Fusion and that Rico's Nano Tank Challenge. So the Rico's Nano Tank Challenge is growing algae on the inside. It's kind of gross and I have an infestation of worms, which is really weird. Um, but there's lots of worms growing in there. And I also have my snail and then my two sexy shrimp. See if you can see them back there but I definitely need to do a lot more work on this tank. It's just really hard to keep up a little Pico tank. And then in here we have the fish, the firefish is hanging out, the chalk bass is hanging out, the royal grama is just loving his life, and we have zoanthids out the wazoo. They are everywhere, look at these. These are absolutely gorgeous. You know, maybe, I don't know if you guys are interested in some of these, but they're cool, I like them, and it's just, it's just nice having them. So anyway, there's the tank. Let's get a side shot. So overall, I've really liked having this tank. I've had this tank for three years now, and it's just it's just a simple, it's a good size aquarium. I'd recommend it to everyone. Uh, just let them know that, you know, you're only gonna have a couple fish in there to have a sustainable ecosystem. So two, three, four, five fish. But hey, I have three fish in here and five shrimp, and basically I have four fish in there. So whatever. So now let's get to the drawing. So here is the auto top off system that I will be mailing the lucky winner. Once again, it is used. Disclaimer, it's used, but it does work. You will have to buy your own pump like an aqua lifter or something. And in order to win this, I'm thinking that I really love watching other people's channels on YouTube. And when people do leave me information on their channels and builds, I do like to check them out. So. Well, in order to win this, please leave a comment below with the link to either a YouTube video or YouTube channel that is uh, reef aquarium related that you really like. So I know Puff Daddy Reef is your first favorite channel, so leave me the link to your second favorite channel below. Also, like and subscribe. If you've done those three things, I will do the drawing for the next video and that will be next week on Sunday, and then I'll send you out this auto top off if you're the winner. So thank you very much for joining me today on Puff Daddy Reef. Have a great time, make great aquariums, and I'll see you next week.